So that was one of the feats, their only consolation perhaps, the fact that they had a fine record against Dundee in the capital, unbeaten in the last six meetings there. But Dundee went into the game on the back of an impressive run, wins over Hibernian and Motherwell, followed by last week's draw in the City Derby. A crowd of just over 10,000 turned up, and among them was our commentator, Rob McLean. Welcome back, Javier Artero, the Spanish winger, back in the starting Dundee lineup after battling back from the effects of MS. Javier is a popular figure with the Dundee fans. He got off to the best possible start a year and a half ago with a wonder goal at Motherwell, and he's hoping he can quickly recapture this sort of form. The Hearts fans are worried that goalkeeper Andy Niemi could be next to appear in the Tyne Castle sales. He's the club's biggest on-field asset at the moment. And there aren't too many games go by without the Finnish international pulling off a superb save or two. Craig Levine told the sports scene lunchtime show, Yemi is going nowhere. The Hearts head coach goes with the same team which lost here last weekend against Livingston. Andy Kirk is fit again, but he'll start on the bench along with another striker keen to return Gary Wales. So Kevin McKenna can concentrate on being a defender again alongside Presley and Webster. In for Dundee, apart from Artero, our skipper Barry Smith returning in defence in place of suspended Fan G and Mark Robertson who's recovered from injury to take over from Beto Garrido. The big miss is five goal Fabian Caballero up front. He failed a fitness test. And the referee for Hearts against Dundee is Alan Freeland. Losing seven games out of eight doesn't do much for your confidence. And that's just the recent run Hearts have gone through, it's taken them from the third place in the SPL, sliding down the table now to ninth and just a point away from the second bottom. So, looking for the sort of result, Hearts, which might just spark a recovery, but there's no doubt, Craig Lewin, the first to admit it, that confidence has eroded. out unforced errors being made by hearts it doesn't help when you're going through a bad spell and signs there that confidence is down and they quickly need to pick it up again Massimo Bigetto Sara nodded down for Kits Bayer neatly off for Gavin Wave bursting through from midfield He's scored one or two crackers already this season. And he's not shy these days at having a crack. But well away this time was the Scotland midfielder. The build-up was good from Dundee, if not the finish. Little shimmy from Gavin Ray takes him away from Tommy Guanla. Positive run. Looking to link up with Artero, that didn't come off. Now, on the counter, Fulton for Hearts. Turning back into trouble, though. Gets by, has it. Well, ricocheting all around the midfield. With little in the way of cohesion, but that's a mistake by Kizmishvili. Full for the down. The first flurry inside either penalty box. And it was down to a mistake by the young Georgian defender, Kizmishvili, playing it off Fuller. And Ricardo Fuller tried then to set up Stefan Adam. But he was pretty successfully closed out at the near post. Most Hearts home games these days, followed by a protest aimed at Chris Robinson. With many of the fans unhappy at the way the club is being run. He takes a lot of the blame, be it right or wrong. Again, it's positive defending and a flare up. And the yellow card shown to Zurakizhnishvili. Here's what happened a little tussle there, arm up from Kizhnishvili against Fuller. Then there was a swing of the arm from the Jamaican and a, a fairly theatrical fall from Kiznishvili. Yellow card for him. You can plead all you like for patience and understanding from the supporters. Craig Levine's done it. 
but they're struggling to sympathise at times this afternoon. Kicked away by Ray. Down goes Kevin McKenna under the challenge of Massimo Vigetto. And a free kick possibility here for Hearts after the push from the veteran Italian who should know better. Everyone behind it for Dundee. Robertson was very quickly out to block. And the first corner kick of the match for Hearts. Taken quickly. Fulton unable to play that into the box. And now counter-attacking possibility for Kits Bayer. Gavin Ray is alongside him. Juan Sala getting through the middle. It's Ray and he's offside. There's a quick break from Kits Bayer and Dundee. And they would have hoped to have kept Ray onside and possibly set up Sara for the game's opening goal. Fulton, Bromland. First time on for Presley. And wide for Mahi. Stefan Adam, good turn, good shot too. That's very encouraging. Stefan Adam realising it's high time hearts tested out Jimmy Langfield. Good first touch, good turn, and the shots wide of targets. Salah holding off the McKenna challenge. Good touch, two for Ray. Good movement from Dundee. Beto Caranza into the penalty box. Here's a chance. Brilliant stop from Anti Yemi. He saved Hart so many times and does so again and this could prove to be an important stop it keeps the scoreline blank and this was a good effort from Beto Garanza and brilliant reflexes from the finish number one to stretch away to his right he got one hand to it but it was certainly a firm hand and it remains nil nil they haven't used the ball well Only a little bit of pressure from Avery on Bigetto. Turned that from goal kick into throw in. Avery's throw aimed at the dam. Steve Fulton had a chance. Unfortunately for him, it fell to his right foot. If this had been on the left, it might well have been a shot on target. As it was, it flew too high. Nemi returning the ball. Back to the other end. Chase for Smith. Played off Fuller. Good work from Ricardo Fuller. And he's disappointed with that, as is Stephen Simmons, who had made a run into the penalty spot, and if Fuller could have turned this back, it may well have been one nil hard. So it was good work from Fuller, you would have to say that, but it's a the side netting comes as a big disappointment, especially to 19-year-old Simmons. Oh, hey, trying to force his way through, which he does. It's the better of Artero. And it wins a free kick. Just when he looked as if he'd lost it. Kizmish Vili was in here to deny the hearts man. So maybe a pressure point here for Jimmy Langfield and Dundee. He's not hiding. He's lining up as well though. Four in it for Dundee. And Steve Fulton in charge for hearts. Good delivery. And Kevin McKenna heads hearts in front. Nine minutes after the turnaround. Great Levine's team are in front and there is the reaction from the Hearts head coach. Flight of ball in from Fulton. Up went McKenna. It was up and over a landfield. The Dundee keeper could do nothing about it. 
So the set piece working well for Hearts. And McKenna, who's played a lot of his football up front this season in defence today, but he's pushed forward to great effect for Hearts. It's 1-0. He now has to really think about his team and his tactics with one player up front and one down. The wheel does well to get away from the dam. Martello and Beto Carranza has it back. Again, it's a good challenge from Fulton. Danley done it too long and Beto Carranza had it back. Mistake by Mabry. Could have been costly. Mark Robertson's effort flies wide. But these are just the sort of situations in which lapses of concentration could cost hearts dear. Carranza's cross should have been pretty comfortable for Alan Mabry, but there was a dangerous touch on the ball and it sliced wide off the outside of Robertson's boot. Fulton's pass left by Gornland for Simmons. Good run from Mabry. And backtracking from Beto Carranza. Jimmy Langfield's in trouble. Still in trouble. Finally flapped away. Tommy Gornland shot blocked. The Dundee keeper in all sorts of trouble there. Well, Jimmy Langfield escapes. Shouldn't really have been a huge problem for him here to have hammered the ball away, but all he succeeded in doing was knocking it up in the air. And he was unconvincing there as well in his attempts to work the ball away. And Rollins' shot was charged down. Fuller. Still Ricardo Fuller. Good challenge to block him from Kiznishvili. That's tremendous defending. And... From D for the moment in defence at sixes and sevens. Little Carranza will turn the ball out of play so that Stephen Presley can get some attention. And it looks as if uh, Ricardo Fuller might be ready to deliver for Hearts exactly what Craig Levine thought he would be able to do when he signed him from the, on loan from the Jamaican club Tivoli Gardens. And it took good work there from Kishnishvili to keep him out. Wales. Trying to hold off Barry Smith's challenge. Which is penalised by Alan Freeland. Free kick given against the Dundee captain. For tugging at Wales as he tried to screen the ball. And Wales now trying to escape from Begeto's tight marking. Mabry's delivery with the free kick juggled by Jamie Langfield. And so close for Amanda Webster. So close to number two for Hearts. And again, Dundee's problem stemming from the set piece. This time it was in from Mabry. And uncertain handling from Jamie Langfield. He didn't cover himself in glory here. And this from Webster could, as he, he's easily have dropped in the net, is on top of it. No way past Gronlin for Artero. Simmons. Mabry. Good work from Alan Mabry. Simmons again. Webster to Presley. Holding off Kitzbayer's challenge. Lofted up for Fulton. Got his head to it well. In goes Ricardo Fuller with a chance. His first goal for Hearts. Makes it 2 0. And Craig Levine knows that should be the point. Secured now. Strong play from the Jamaican, skillful play as well. Fulton's flip was crucial in this. And when Fuller got on the wrong side of Walter Del Rio, 
You knew this could spell problems for Dundee. It was composed from the Jamaican international striker. And he just stroked the ball away from Jimmy Lanfield. So now, Hearts 2, Dundee 0. Good exchange. Montero's pass is pretty clever as well for Milne. Good build up from Dundee, rewarded with a corner kick, came off Andy Webster after it was turned across by Mill. Matteo's delivery, failing to get beyond Mahi, and it's Wales. Turning away from the challenge of Kits Baya. Fulton, good effort, a stinging shot, and a save that was pure reflex from Jimmy Langfield, in from Simmons, it looked as if it might fall for Kirk, and that was a good hit from Fulton and a top class save from Langfield. Kizanishvili's pass is a good one for Barney Smith, this is inviting, a cross cut to Fulton, so important that... And he has put in a power of work for Hearts this afternoon. And he's got a great response as well from the Hearts fans who have appreciated his every effort. Kuznishvili gets forward, Sara. Vito Carranza has a chance here for Dundee. Straight out Antti Niemi. And one wonders if Sara had let this go first time. Vito Carranza might have had an even better chance of pulling the goal back. Full time at Time Castle. The win, Craig Levine and Hearts so desperately wanted. Ricardo Fuller there beside him scored the second goal after Kevin McKenna had made the all-important breakthrough heading in Steve Fulton's free kick and they will hope that this is the sort of platform from which they can put together a run of results which gets them back up the league look at what it means to Levine and all the players three points for Hearts final score at Tyne Castle Hearts 2, Dundee 0 so a welcome win for Hearts, which relieves the pressure a little on them. Ivana Benetti is with us. Um, you feel a little frustrated at losing out on that one, Ivana? Uh, I mean, uh, we have a couple of chances in the first half. Uh, we, we, we should score. If you don't score, I mean, one long ball, something can happen. Unfortunately, it's happened in the second half by, by free, kick, free kick, and, and then uh, we didn't come back strongly. You know, this is the football. If you don't go, if you don't score, it's difficult to win. Was it the sort of game standing on the touchline that that you had concerns about, or, or did you feel your team were playing okay? And, and no, I was very. Uh, I was talking before. I was very confident in the first half because we we recovered very well, and then we 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 with some very wonderful counter attack, but uh, we didn't finalize. That's the problem. But I was very really confident. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, in the second half, they found the goal by Eddie. So this uh, is changing the game. A big plus was being able to see Javier Artero back in the team. That, that must be good. Yeah, it was wonderful to see him in action again. He's done quite well for the first time than he's played. But uh, obviously, this is a good news for us, for the team, because he's another important player. As soon as he will be fit, he's a, he's a good player. And then uh, that's one positive thing today. showed today that, that uh, the players want to play for Hearts, they want to play for their supporters, and they're desperately keen to do well for this club. We saw, I think, um, throughout the highlights there, just how much Eric, it, it meant to Craig Levine. He's been feeling it recently, and, and getting the goals, you saw the reaction on the bench there. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a great relief for him, I'm sure, after a bad run of results. But uh, yeah, I think I think they probably deserve, they've got the two goals today, Ivan, says that they dominated the game in the first half and had chances but at the end of the day you've got to score goals and uh, Hearts have come up with two. You understand from, from Craig Levine's point of view there Ravana, you, you saw the relief as well, you, you'll empathise I suppose with managers in that sort of position. Yeah I mean uh, the Hearts is done what they had to do and they scored two goals and at the end of the day it's good for them.
<laughs> Let, let's take a look at the, the two goals then. Um, Steve Fulton was obviously involved in both, and he actually a fairly central character throughout. Um, you're not happy with either of the goals? You no, because we uh, we didn't mark properly the, uh, our unfortunately the number five, and then he's jumping by himself, and then he scored an easy goal for him because he's tall. So. And in the, the in, second in, one too, the marking? In the second half, uh, we made a mistake by the, I think, by the two, two central half because they had to run a little bit before running to the goal, but they didn't recover very well. Then, in fact, Walter De Rio he lost the position. He should to run a little bit more, a little bit soon. But he's done a good goal after that because he, he stayed up and then he scored a good goal. Steve Fulton, Eric, involved in um, <coughs> both the goals and, and we see him in action there too. He was a player who looked to be on his way out. Um, he's clearly done an awful lot of hard work to force his way back into Craig Levine's plans. Yeah, I think he'll become a big player for Hearts now because he's a very composed football player. A lot of experience and that's what Hearts need at this moment in time. They need somebody who's been over the course and can organise things and get the young players playing around about them. So I think he'll be a big player for them. And I suppose that the fact that he's been over the course, as you say, he has been there, he's mm. done it. And is that a, a, an important factor when you've got young kids in the team that you need a player who, who has that sort of experience alongside them? Absolutely, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I'm sure Craig Levine sees the value in him. Um, and I think today he played a real sort of leader's role, um, keeping the ball. But he's a good football player, we all know he's a good football player. And it's just, I think this will be his opportunity now to, to stake a claim for a, for a regular place and be a real player for Hearts. We saw Mark Robertson in action here, of course, the Dundee midfielder. He reckons perhaps the turning point came at nil-nil. And Dean Yemi is the man to blame. It was a great save. I mean, uh, I think myself and, and the rest of the guys thought that was going in and, and we were ready to, to get away with it. But, I mean, it was a great save. So, I mean, we had to get on from there and we never. And uh, we could come around and we ended up losing, so... This event, it was a great piece of action. Do you feel Beto was going to score here? No, he's done a good action, but he tried to shoot in that position. And uh, probably, if you have more cold, then you can shift. But he's done a good running, a good skill, and then uh, a good keeper is shaved. Yeah, it was a super save, Man. wasn't it, um, from Antin Yemi, Eric? It was a first class save, just as Ivan was saying there, when Carranza comes in, you think he's going to chip it to the back post and maybe curl it round. But uh, Antin Yemi is a wonderful save to get down so low, and it's a good strike. So it's a top-class save, and those are the ones that change games. <laughs> We've been talking, Ivana, throughout the day about um, <coughs> diving and about players. And there's one incident we'll want to look at here involving Zura Kizamishvili, yeah. um, involved in, in the incident here. He was yellow carded for this. Any complaints about this? No, but he received a couple of punches, but I think, uh, you know, uh, when, he, when he came up, he tried to, to touch the player. That's why the referee probably saw just that action. That's why you receive the yellow card. It is something. It could be double yellow and yellow. Probably was better. Both <coughs> players. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But uh, probably the referee didn't see the first time. He, he see just he saw just uh, Zura Kishan is really to touch him. It so. is. Um, it's something you've spoken about recently about players um, doing this sort of thing. We've been talking about it a lot on the radio and television today. Is it something that that you want to hammer home to your players not to get involved in in cheating like that in diving? I mean, um, I don't know many players then they do this because if you, he received the yellow card because he touched with his feet the other player, not because he's lie down. But he's, an, I mean, he's, he's not the kind of reaction that I like it. But he was very, very, I mean, yellow card, he was right, so <laughs> nothing to say. Wait, I said to you, we've we had a great response from, from Dundee fans when they heard you were coming on, and, and lots of them have been in touch. Um, Barry Robertson from Dundee. He's asking, um, why today you, you went with one up front? He, the Hearts were perhaps lacking confidence. This might have been a good time to, to go and attack them right from the start. I mean, uh, we didn't play just with one in front because uh, if you if you take a look for the first players, there was Kisbaya, uh, Beto Karan. There are many, many players that they can counter-attack. And then uh, because we're missing Romano and, and, and Garrido, they are two good midfielders that can stay in position. And then we, we didn't have Fabian Caballero. That's why I chose to play just with one side in front and try to counter track. In fact, in the first half, I believe that we, we, have a, we have a good first half and then we created two or three chances. William Flucker, another Dundee fan. Um, yeah. the, the question is, he says it's good to see the homegrown talent, young lads like Barry Forbes, who we saw coming in today, yeah. um, to, to see them involved in the team. Is that something 
he's asking that, that you will be um, expanding in the future. You'll, you'll go to the youngsters. Of course, would you would you have a, would you have a, the, the good player that you're young? You you want to push on. Barry is a good player. I believe that he becomes stronger. Obviously, step by step. As soon as I have a time, uh, time and chance to put in, I'll do that. And just finally, lots of fans are asking, will we see you playing again? <coughs> <laughs> that would be a no then. Well, we had to ch we had to choice or give you the body, space force body or uh, to play. So it's difficult to play. Uh, okay. Well, thank you.